What's going on everybody? I hope everybody's had a great day and now come spend a little bit of time with me and let's talk about Brian Koberger He's saying he has an alibi. <laughs> So I was watching this video earlier from Court TV. It's called Brian Koberger's Alibi, Defense Response to the State's Demands. What they said was triggered me, you know, and I wanted to rant and rave about it. So I figured might as well get on here and talk to y'all. We can watch it together and then I can tell you guys what I think because maybe I'm just tripping. But Brian Koberger turned in a document to say that he does have an alibi that he is going to try to prove that he was somewhere else other than where the crime took place he denies the charges now i know a lot of people get mad when i say it but up until this point we haven't heard brian koberger or brian koberger's lawyer say that he denies the charges he stood silent so he never even got to claim that he's not guilty of the crime but now we have his legal team coming out and saying he denies the charges that he was somewhere else that he couldn't but they submitted a document saying that they are going to present an alibi i think the whole the state's demand for an alibi i think that's ridiculous I mean, unless it's cut and dry alibi where they got him on video at this place during those exact minutes, I don't think that the state would throw the case out because of his alibi anyway, right? And if they're planning to wait and they're going to turn it over at Discovery, they're playing the same game that the prosecution's playing with certain evidence that the defense has been asking for, and they're like, yeah, well, we'll have it ready later. We'll turn it over before discoveries do. I don't see how the state can demand you give the alibi now or it can't be used later. I mean, what does that, what does that even mean? I think he's probably going to be guilty, right? But I don't know that he's guilty, and I don't know all the evidence that the prosecution has and I don't know what his defense is but if he can establish a, an, an alibi I don't feel like he's on any of the state's time frame to establish the alibi as long as he establishes it in front of the jury right at trial I don't see him not allowing him to use an alibi because he didn't turn it over beforehand so I'm really not understanding that deadline situation I don't know I'm dumb right i'm i ain't never been in no trouble i'm just out here in the country i'm just telling you what i think so don't get so uptight crazy stuff in the comments man some of y'all are just off your damn rockers you know <laughs> i mean i'm a little crazy too but some of y'all are just out there but what did we find out today we found out they may very well present some form of an alibi for a defense in this case Meaning, couldn't have been me. I wasn't there. I was over here. I wasn't here. No, no, I've got an alibi. So let's see. Um, All right, so that's a good breakdown of that, right? That's exactly what that means. If you have an alibi, if you can prove that your alibi, like if you have another person saying, yes, he was here. If you have multiple people saying you were here. If you have some reason like your phone showing you're there or your watch showing you're there or some of your items, right? Something putting you in a different place. But the problem with this crime here is that it happened in like between 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning, right? 4 to 425, whatever. But between 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, this crime took place. Most people are going to be at home asleep. And Brian Koberger is a 28-year-old PhD student living in campus housing so there's not anybody really to say yes he's at home unless his neighbors or something are around or he had a visitor or he was out with somebody doing something else he was at somebody else's house with somebody so the chances that he would have an alibi even if he's innocent are slim to start but this guy this guy doesn't think so and we're about to get into that. And it all came out through some papers that were filed. A notice of defendant's response to state's alibi demand. So the state is saying, listen, if you've got an alibi, you need to let us know about it, right? So here's how the defendants responded to that. Uh, the accused killer defense team continues investigating and preparing his case. Evidence corroborating the accused killers uh, being at a location other than the King Road address 
will be disclosed pursuant to discovery and evidentiary rules as well as statutory requirements. It is anticipated this evidence may be offered by way of cross-examination of witnesses produced by the state as well as calling expert witnesses. So what they're saying here is that they'll give their alibi, their alibi is their case. They're going to present the alibi with their case. They're not going, like obviously they don't have him on camera somewhere. Or they don't just have eyewitnesses saying, yes, you're here. Let's read it again. Mr. Kohlberger's defense team continues investigating and preparing his case. They're still working on it. They're going to work up all the way through trial. Like during trial, they're still going to be working on his case, right? Evidence corroborating Mr. Kohlberger being at a location other than the King Road address will be disclosed pursuant to discovery and evidentiary rules as well as statutory requirements. Now to me, that feels like they're saying, F you, what do you mean deadline to give an alibi? We're going to present our alibi with our case. We're not turning it in right now, but yes, Mr. Kohlberger will have an alibi. So at least that lets us know that there's going to be some type of defense other than just like in Y&W Melly's case, proving that the state doesn't have a case, Brian Kohlberger's team are actually going to say, this isn't what happened, this is what happened with our client, Mr. Kohlberger, that night. Right? So we're going to get an alternate story. Is that story going to be believable? Who knows? It is anticipated that this evidence may be offered by way of cross-examination of witnesses produced by the state as well as calling expert witnesses. They're anticipating the fact that they're going to, to draw out what their alibi is during the trial. That they're going to corroborate that alibi using the witnesses that are going to be called and cross-examining the prosecution's witness Mr. Kohlberger says he wasn't in the car, that he was here. We have no evidence that Mr. Kohlberger was in that car. And then, furthermore, we have no evidence that that is Mr. Kohlberger's car. Now, I doubt that last part right there flies very well, seeing that his phone was moving with the vehicle for the, the beginning and the end of the trip, right? But, maybe, could be that they forced the state to have to prove Yes, that is definitely Kohlberger's car, which would mean it has to have some type of marking that's not the same on any other car. We know that he didn't have a front license plate, so maybe the front license plate will serve as that marker and it'll be enough for the jury, but maybe it won't. If the defense can find other white Hyundai Elantras in that area somehow that also don't have front license plates, which I'm sure a few exist, if not a broke down car sitting in the yard, missing the license plate. Never put it past the defense to go above and beyond, right? That's their job. This person's life depends on them doing their job to their best ability. So I wouldn't put it past them to find other white Hyundai Elantras that don't have a front tag somewhere around that area of Idaho within an hour or so and just point that out and say his car isn't the only one, right? Let's move forward. Hmm. All right. I get it. I, I mean, innocent people, for the most part, there might be a case where it might not exactly work that way, but innocent people accused of murder should have an alibi, right? Oh, I think almost every one of them should have an alibi. That's stupid. That's the first thing that this guy said earlier that triggered me. Why should you have an alibi? When we're talking about a crime that took place in the middle of the night and the suspect is someone who lives alone, right? Why should he have an alibi? Now, I'm not saying that he can't. Obviously, anybody could have an alibi. Anybody could have something to, to show or prove or suggest that they were in another place during the time that a crime happens, right? To say you should have it, that if you're an innocent person, you should have an alibi, that's ridiculous. Like that's that doesn't even make sense. It's suspicious when they don't. Like if the murder took place here and you didn't do it, well, where were you? And just tell us where you were, and that way we can exclude you. I can't remember. If, if somebody were to grab me right now and ask me, "What did you do 
last Thursday afternoon between the hours of 2 to 5. I have no idea. Maybe I can go back and look through my phone or, or talk to my family and figure out exactly what was going on around that time. But when we're talking about within between 4 and 4.25, it's hard to remember for me. This is me. Maybe you guys are different, but my memory, my short-term memory is really not that good. And I'm ADHD to the gills, so I'm constantly moving on to other things like I'm trying to do with this conversation right here, I guess. But anyway, I have to do something to refresh my memory to tell you exactly where I was yesterday. I feel like the idea that you should have an alibi or you should be able to just pop off exactly where you were at this day at this time when you didn't even know that you were supposed to be remembering that. It, it, that's crazy to me.